Hey, hey, so I just finally had to go live and talk about ketogenic diets. I have kept quiet for months for a reason, if you know me at all. First of all, I am not into bashing anything or anyone or anyone's products. However, I'm also not one to keep quiet after I've done my due diligence as a scientist and like dug into the research. So I've purposely kept quiet on this topic for a few months and as I've seen and observed and heard and listened and I have literally rolled up my sleeves and read as much as I could get my hands on with regard to peer-reviewed research articles and uh, just speaking with my colleagues in the world of exercise physiology and in nutrition to um, roundtable it and to argue some points and it's time it's time because a lot of my clients and a lot of people reach out to me and they ask me about it and I just I have to speak up I you know really believe in delivering the truth and here's what I say what I've always said the fact is most diets work and most diets suck. It's about you. And my philosophy will always be, as it stands, that if you go to work on the inside, the outside will take care of itself. So let's just break it down for a second. The first point I want to make, a ketogenic diet, if you're familiar, it's very restrictive. And that's my number one concern. For most people, it's so highly restrictive because literally 75% of your meals are coming from super high fat and it's very, very little protein and essentially no carbohydrates. So that really limits the choice of foods that you get to eat. Now, that's a big buzzing red flag for me, okay? Number one. Number two, as I read through a lot of the research, I saw, you know what, in some cases with some populations, a ketogenic diet or ketosis, they're two different things. Ketosis is really starvation, right? So a lot of the buzz around fasting and a ketogenic diet is um, mimicking the fasting state by essentially eliminating carbohydrates from your diet and forcing your body to um, produce the same kind of effect. It's, it's really tapping into its stored fat, depleting it, and creating what we call ketones, which um, are also found in nail polish remover. Just a little interesting side effect. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with the science. I just want to get some points across. So in some populations, a ketogenic diet could be helpful. Um, folks with brain injury, we've seen some evidence, and this is going back, you know, 60, 70 years we've been using this type of diet. Uh, a more recent development in the world of type 2 diabetes and possibly even metabolic syndrome. So for specific populations, yes, this could be a helpful approach. But it's not an end-all cure for everybody, and it's certainly not, you know, hey, I want to drop fat, you know, and, and that's my main goal. I want to get ripped. I want to get shredded. I'm going to do the keto diet. Again, big red flag. So the way it works is that, you know, ketones can actually be used as like a fourth energy source. Like pr we use protein, we use carbohydrates, we use fat for energy. That's what we get from our food, fuel. And that we can also get fuel from ketones. And that is true. We can use it as an energy source. But guess what? Just because we can use it as an energy source doesn't mean that it is healthy. There are other ways we can get energy. We can get energy from sugary treats, refined sugar. We can get energy from alcohol. So just because we can doesn't mean that we should. And that moves into the next point I have, which again, I'm just, I just want to give you the red flags that I feel as a physiologist. Measuring your ketones. Not only is this not necessarily practical, it's not necessarily always accurate. The keto sticks used to measure ketones, there's a lot of variability in that. And that brings me full circle to the point I really want to get to, which is measurement in and of itself removes the joy and spice of life and being a healthy, wonderful animal we call human. It's, it's defeating the purpose, okay? 
It's about switching the focus. The end game shouldn't be, hey, let me measure my urine every day to see if I'm producing ketones. And maybe the focus should be, how could I have the most energy, the most fun, and the most vibrancy in every single moment of my life? It's, we're just, we keep asking the wrong questions. What difference does it make if you sit in, if you fit into a size two pair of jeans and you're literally measuring your urine, counting your calories, eating nothing but fat, and you know, you're so imprisoned by it. That's where I become very concerned about any diet that requires tremendous restrictions. So bottom line, in the long run, my opinion, it's just not sustainable. It eliminates the joy from your life. And further point for us women, we already have such a, you know, complex range of hormones that dances in our bodies all day long. And I just truly believe that it is not worth it to create any more turmoil. And in some cases, in some of the research, it just hasn't been safe, particularly for women. And, uh, Again, why do something where there's even a question of your long-term safety and health? That's concerning to me. I know a lot of people believe in uh, fasting for longevity. And while there is some evidence to support that fasting does promote longevity, my question to you is, it, is that your, if that's your number one goal and nothing else matters to you, then I say, yup, fast. Because your end game is just, you know, hey, I, I want to blow out my candles on my 150th birthday. That's my goal. Cool. Then I think that fasting is going to be reasonable for you and everything that comes along with it. But if your goal is I want to live a vibrant, happy life in each moment that I am alive and not anticipating some future date 100 years from now, then you're probably gonna rob yourself of some joy and beauty in the present moment if you're fasting all the time. Just saying, again, this is based on the science, but also I'm giving you my opinion as a coach and doing this for 20 years. So it's just a question of matching yourself up with your goals. And last point, if you're an athlete, again, I could say, as an exercise physiologist, I can assure you that getting your fuel from carbohydrate and glycogen, which is stored in the muscles, is far superior if we're talking about running faster and going harder, okay? Your performance as an athlete sometimes depends on the ability to do those things and you're just not going to be able to go that fast or that hard if you're using stored fat and ketones as your energy source. That's, that's pretty much a fact. There is some interesting research going on right now with regard to aerobic performance and using uh, ketones as supplementation to uh, enhance aerobic performance, but the research is totally inconclusive at this point, and I wouldn't recommend that for anybody, you know, as of yet, but who knows, maybe, you know, five, 10 years down the road, we might say, you know, ketone supplementation, if you're a long distance runner or cyclist might be helpful, but I'm not comfortable with that right now. I don't think the research is conclusive enough. That's my jam on keto. Take it or leave it. I did it because I really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, want to help you, and if this is leaving you still confused, reach out to me. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for. I will align you with the right plan based on what your goals are. But I'm also going to give the disclaimer that if you are my client, we are going to focus on the one thing we all want, which is joy. <laughs> and how we're going to get there. For most people, it's not just Again, fitting into a size two pair of jeans, that might be part of it, but that's not the, that's not the whole picture because you could get into that size two and still be a miserable human being. We got to dig a little deeper than that. So if you want some more information, comment below and I am kicking off 14 days of radical self-love. We kick off one week from today. At this point, I literally have four spots left, so I would say grab one of those, get in, 
and we're going to really talk about how to align yourself with your goals so that you are living your most vibrant, energetic, joyful life. And the pounds are just going to be a side effect. They're going to fall off because you're happy. So get in there and let's work some magic together. I hope this was helpful. Boom. Comment below. Let me know. Peace out.